George Herman Ruth, a.k.a. The Babe, a.k.a. The Sultan of Swat, a.k.a. The Great Bambino, a.k.a. That Ghost from the Sandlot, was born in 1895 and played 22 seasons of Major League Baseball and... Uh, what's it fucking matter? I'm not talking about any kind of legitimate biography here. I'm talking about the Babe Ruth story, a movie that usually makes it to the top of oh, worst biographies ever made. A film that reduces the Babe story down to such an aw oh, gee shucks mentality that I'm surprised Ruth wasn't portrayed by two members of the Little Rascals in an overcoat. It's sad that one of the nicest things I can say about the bio, other than its unintentional hilarity, is that at least there's no scene where a screaming Babe Ruth is on his autopsy table having his organs cut out of him by a hibachi chef. The film was rushed into release in 1948 in order to get it out in time while Babe Ruth, then on his deathbed, was still alive. The movie has such a squeaky clean attitude and almost godlike portrayal of its leading character that it feels less like a biography and more like a propaganda piece. Seriously, by the end of the film, you'd swear the movie was trying to sell the world a dictator. But don't just take my word for it. That's what the opening narration is for. Here in this peaceful, leafy Susquehanna Valley of Upper New York State, the greatest idols produced in the history of baseball are honored in a unique museum where the world's best baseball players are wheeled in frozen in carbonite. They decided to go with the title The Babe Ruth Story after their previous title, Not The Babe Ruth Story, didn't fly. In their defense, they probably thought they were making a movie about a candy bar. Sam Levine? I didn't know that inglorious bastard had been around this long. Hot damn, he hasn't aged. The film was adapted from the book of the same name, though they took enough contextual liberties that it might as well star Jeff Fahey as a simpleton who mows lawns. The film was even brought to us by Roy Del Ruth, at the time the second highest paid director in Hollywood, having directed It Happened on Fifth Avenue and the 1931 pre-code version of The Maltese Falcon. Plus, the movie has to be accurate. The director's name is Ruth, too. Hell, I'm surprised that according to this movie, baseball isn't played with a bouncy ball and a net. This museum has all the greats. Honus Wagner, I remember him from Mr. Burns' original lineup. There's John Quick Draw McGraw. There's Hawaiian Eye star Connie Mack. Former President Grover Alexander. And Kennesaw Landis. I remember him from the last bio I watched. Who else got in this museum? The one and only Ty Cobb, the Georgia Peach. <laughs> yeah, sure, that's all there is to say about Ty Cobb. While the kids look sad that they're standing in a hall of dead people, one thing is cheering them up. This plaque of Babe Ruth molded to look like Rush Limbaugh for some reason. And that's where the narrator takes them back in time for a wee bit of fractured fairy tales. <laughs> They came this close to having that character dubbed by Mel Blanc. Little George Ruth seems to have hit a hole through the Chinese guy's window. At least Ruth's father is respectful to the guy. I'll raise an old net again, huh? Maybe George here gets treated with some respect. Ah, no biggie. People in Boston have been doing that to Bill Buckner for years. Needless to say, George is not happy here. I have a good mind to send you back to St. Mary's in the morning. St. Mary's is not a reform school, Mr. Ruth. Whoa, what the fuck? Does this guy magically show up every time St. Mary's is mentioned? Brother Matthias, can I come back? The free beer at St. Mary's is much better than this. All they got here is plain old Coors Light. It's easy to tell what year this is supposed to be. It's the year that Teddy Ruxpin ran for president. Agreeing to go back to St. Mary's school, George is all dressed up to become a newsie. Or at least get hit by a bus while his ghost continues to haunt Rose Byrne. Ah, the good old days, where if you were unhappy as a child, a priest could come along and take you away willingly. Things aren't so good for George, though, when the nuns of St. Mary force him to sit on Santa's lap, thus leading to the eventual climax where he slaughters innocent people for being naughty. Oh, sorry, I'm talking. What did I miss here, narrator? The Severian brothers taught him to be a tailor, but every time he left school to become a tailor's apprentice, he was sent back with the same complaint. 
that he was far handier with a baseball than a needle. What? How did that confusion even happen? Did he go to thread someone's suit and then accidentally hit him in the face with a bat? And where the fuck is he? Have you seen him this morning? No. I wonder where he is. <laughs> oh, that George, little scamp. Oh, wait, that's 18-year-old George? That's a 42-year-old man! I guess middle age is perfect to be picked up for baseball. As soon as he gets signed on by Fred Mertz, here to help out Lucy and Ethel at a manufacturing plant that makes bats. Only there's a slight problem I have with the way he talks. I was trying to throw a curve, and it worked. It's the Baltimore Orioles. That's a real baseball team. And I'll start you at $600 a season. How's that? $600? There ain't that much money in the whole world. There isn't that much money. That's what I said. There ain't that much money in the world. Okay, uh... I don't remember hearing about the babe being this... Special. If you go by this movie, the second best bio made about Babe Ruth is the Where's My Baseball Guy from There's Something About Mary. That's what happens when you have a teenager played by a 42-year-old. He's gonna sound like a 42-year-old man with the mind of a child. At least we find out where his nickname comes from. Wait till my boy's gonna look at this babe. Babe. Babe Ruth. You're getting a nickname and a job. Great, so his name came from an even older man hitting on him? Does he at least have some sick moves? Well, everyone's great at baseball when you have a string attached to the ball. Well, except for maybe Leela. Now he's all geared up for his first big game with the Orioles. Are you gonna eat all those sandwiches, babe? Oh, uh, this is only one sandwich, Mr. Dunn. You see, it comes in sections. Be careful there. Chuck Lorre might steal that joke for Mike and Molly. I don't know about his pitching, but when it comes to eating, he's going to have the biggest average in baseball. Well, boys, he may be eating all our food, but at least we don't have to play ball with any black people. Am I right, fellas? <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm sure these guys are on the up and up. Well, hello, fellas. Hiya, babe. Comfortable? Yeah, sure. Everything's all right, huh? Yeah, everything's swell. Only, uh, only, uh, what's this for? A midget sleeping in it. Travel for half fare. Yeah, gee, hey, that's something. Why would you believe that? Then again, he does believe them that he's supposed to leave his arm in this net the whole night, thus causing him to wake up with it fast asleep and dead. Why would they even do this prank to him? They have a big game the next morning. You with that dead arm trying to get him past guys like Home Run Baker, Stuffy McGinnis, Eddie Collins. Is anything else wrong with you? Yes, sir, I'm hungry. In case you didn't get it, he eats a lot because he's fat. That's what this movie wants you to know about Babe Ruth. That he has an IQ like Forrest Gump, and he breathes sandwiches. The baseball stuff is mostly shown to us in newspaper footage, such as his time with the Orioles, and his being sold off to the Red Sox. But thank God they showed us the all-important arm sling prank. Boy, look at the Babe's talents. Watch him. He's gonna throw a curve. It was a curve. Wow, he's so good that the cameraman is too scared to even show him. But I guess everyone has a bad game now and again. That's enough for today. Take a bath. But Bill! I, I've never been taken out of a game in my life. Ah, oh, come on. It's not a big deal. What are you, like 20 in this scene? How weird is it seeing everyone else drinking in the Babe Ruth story except for Babe Ruth? Poor guy needs some cheering up. This is the second letter from Brother Matthias. It deserves an answer. Want me to write it for you? How can you answer? How can you tell Brother Matthias what's wrong when I don't know myself? I bet I can tell you what's wrong. Phil, your voice is changing. He doesn't even know that was a different person talking to him? And I'm sure in real life, the meat cute looked like it was straight out of a Bugs Bunny cartoon. Look, chump, you can always learn something from a woman. And then he went out and got 12 prostitutes. This is Babe's soon-to-be wife, Claire, which they completely skip over his first marriage to Helen Woodford, which ended due to numerous infidelities. I can't imagine why they left that part out! Does he woo Claire over with his amazing wit? How do you think I got to the big league? Telegraph every curve ball. What do you think I am, a Western Union boy? <laughs> That's a pretty good one, Phil. 
Ah, <laughs> uh, early 1900s jokes. This is slightly embarrassing, though. His tie has significant shrinkage. But Claire does help him realize his pitching flaw. There, you see? Every time you throw a curve, you stick out your tongue. Oh, shit, that means he has brain cancer. This little doll over here spotted it. You've got to meet her. Honey, this is... Oh, oh geez, she was a go 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 ghost it gives us more exposition by simply showing us newspapers. But why? He looks great for a guy having a stroke. St. Mary's School is very excited for Babe, especially Arthur Fonzarelli in the back here. But this week... This week the Babe pitched and won two games in the World Series. And today the Babe's team beat the Chicago Cubs. Oh, well, yeah, I mean, he beat the Cubs. How hard can that possibly be? And now he's making $10,000? Oh shucks, that's twice as much as $600. At least he's spending his money wisely by buying up all the newspapers with his name in it and buying dinner for kids. Mr. Ruth, what's the biggest tip you ever got? Why, $100, sir. That's peanuts here. Here's $200. Thank you, sir. Hey. Who's the cheapskate gave you the measly hundred bucks? Why, you did, sir. Jimmy Crickets, now I gotta kick my own ass. And it turns out that Claire wasn't a ghost after all when he sees her picture on the showgirl lineup. Oh, jeez Louise, how did they squish her down to fit in this star? Where have you been? I beg your pardon. Don't you, don't you remember me? Oh, it's you. Let me touch it. <laughs> now that's the Babe Ruth I know. She gives him the cold shoulder, but that just gives him the idea to follow her out on stage. I walk down the lane with a happy refrain, the singing, the singing in the rain. Um, and then the droogs rape someone? Remember, this is old timey baseball, back when there were 10 hitters at bat. I parked here so you could see the pitcher's box, Denny. That was nice of his kidnapper to do that for him while keeping him shot up with horse tranquilizers. He's playing in the outfield. I wonder why. <laughs> Isn't it obvious? It's because he's not very good. I see him now, Dad. Oh boy, he's going to bat. Thanks for telling us that movie. I wouldn't have known that he's at bat just from you showing us that he's at bat. And I'm starting to think everyone in the movie has the mind of a child. Well, Babe just hit a home run. The longest one I ever saw. Well, sorry, I'm too excited to sit you up so that you can see it for yourself. Not that that matters, because the movie Miracle has got nothing on the miracles that happen in this film. Hiya, kid! Hiya, Babe! Oh, Denny, don't! Denny, you moved. You lifted yourself. Probably because the medication is finally kicking in, as well as the thousands of dollars worth of medical procedures. He spoke to me. Babe Ruth spoke to me himself. Or it's because Babe Ruth is Jesus. Denny, Denny, they said you'd never... Uh, nope, nope, nothing inappropriate going on here. For Christ's sake, I'm surprised that's not a candy cigar that he's smoking. Today at the Tampa ballpark, he performed three miracles. He gave up his career as a pitcher and turned in an outstanding performance in left field. He hit the longest home run in the history of baseball. And he cured a crippled child by simply saying, Hiya, kid. Yeah, we're just going to submit that part of the story to the Weekly World News. We haven't seen Claire in a while. Might as well write her a love letter. But since Babe is shitty at love letters, let's have someone else write it. To be near you, my beloved, is to know heaven on earth. Although you are miles away, I am happy in the thought that the sea has its pearls, the heavens its stars, and I have you. Oh, I see they've left the part in where William Bendix straight up comes on camera. It's important to know that early 1900s baseball primarily used wadded up newspapers as their balls. And again, it completely glosses over pretty important milestones in just the flash of a newspaper. Boston fans in an uproar, eh? <laughs> I'm sure they got over it. Let's move on to Babe joining the Yankees. Well, hiya, shorty. What are you doing down there? I like it down here. They're practicing their new comedy duo. Babe Ruth and William Sanderson talk sports. This movie is so lighthearted, it wouldn't even pass if they were played by Chris Farley and David Spade. Get a good grip on your fountain pen and your checkbook. 
because what I want... 20,000 is what we wish to pay you. 20,000? That's like 10 times 600. Someone get this man a beer. <laughs> <laughs> hey, sister, are you a baseball writer, too? Sure, you want to make something of it? Do they let you in the Yankee dressing room? No, and I don't let the Yankees in mine, either. Down <laughs> the hatch, babe. Come to Papa. <laughs> <laughs> Name skirts, chicks. Am I right, boys? If her vagina's the mug, then my pecker is the stout. And it's Tuesday, so that means dollar drafts at the whorehouse. From then on, Babe was riding high. He played a lot of ball during the day, but he played around a lot at night. Well, that's the closest the movie comes to ever spotlighting the real stars of the Babe Ruth story, The Hookers. After all, this movie has a message. Now, kids, I want you all to remember what I said about smoking. It's only bad for you if you smoke before dinner, so whip up a bowl of ice cream and sprinkles and top it off with a pack of Chesterfields. Okay, so we got the shitty stuff out of the way, and now we can focus on the game. <laughs> Fuck. I didn't mean it, honest. The pooch just ran out on the field and... Gee, baby, Pee Wee won't die, Willie Baby won't die. I'm gonna go out on a limb and say that that part of the story never happened. Um, um, babe, where are you going? You still have a game to play. Get your best doctors in there in a hurry, I got a sick dog. And also, you've got a dying screenplay. Unfortunately, I don't think that can be saved. Ain't you guys doctors? What do you mean you won't operate just because he's a dog? You know, I'm just glad that this scene finally got a proper remake in the James Belushi movie K-9. We only operate on humans. What's more human than this little pooch? Um, humans? Maybe if there's time, the doctor can do something about this kid's face. Congratulations to the happy couple. It's a boy. No shit, genius here forgot that he's supposed to be in a baseball game. And shock of all shocks, he's in trouble for it. Well, I'm finding you 5,000 bucks, now be good and tired. 5,000 bucks? Hey, that's the biggest fine I've ever plastered on a ball player. Yeah, you little creep, you can't do that to me. No, you can't do that to babe. You tell him, babe, I'm with you. I'm doing that and more. You're suspended indefinitely. What? Well, you still missed a game without telling anyone, but at least Crispin Glover the bellboy is on your side. Go back to New York and stay there until I say you can play again. Now laugh that off. That's telling them, babe, I'm with you, babe, I'm with you. I'm with you. And then he blew him. Let the storm and cops chase everyone from the place. Come on with the rain. I have a smile on my face. I walk down the lane. With... Oh, yeah, sure, he went out for a glass of milk. And here's the look of a man who had no idea that his date was bringing him to a musical. I'm blue somehow, won't someone hear my plea? <laughs> Sheesh, lady, if you keep screaming in his ear, he'll only mildly want to have sex with you. What? Bad boy of baseball? Oh, probably because he's drinking whole milk instead of non-fat. Scandalous! Things get awkward when a couple of sharks try asking the babe to throw one of the games. Or maybe they just wanted to bring him some bad news. You know, babe, word on the street is, there's no Santa Claus. <laughs> it's all good. He'll get out of the slammer in no time. Last night, the brawling Babe Ruth was arrested by 24 policemen after bouncing two home runs off the chins of two innocent bystanders. Wow, that sounded like an amazing scene. Sure wish I could have seen it. Oh, wait, now I get it. It's just an episode of Children's Hospital. Oh, that Rob Corddry's a comedic genius. We meet back up with Claire, and up until this point, I wasn't sure if they were a couple or not. It barely shows them playing baseball, so how the hell am I supposed to know if they're a couple yet? I'll be back later. Don't you want to see Babe Ruth too, Aunt Claire? Well, no, Bobby. I I've had that pleasure several times. Um, I'll go shopping and see you later. I'm keeping better track of the babe's love for dogs than I am his romantic interest. On the bright side, he convinces himself that there is a Santa Claus by dressing up as him and showing up drunk. Whether you asked for it or not, you represent the dreams and ambitions of millions of American kids. How you act, they act. Never forget that. I'm certainly not forgetting it, because films like the Babe Ruth story are why I and others like me drink. And here we go again, letting newspapers take the place of actually showing anyone playing baseball. 
And when the stats aren't shown to us in the papers, they're just spoken to us. As business manager, I have to think of Babe only as a good investment or a bad one. He's 32 years old. You think it's bad now? Where do they find out that he is so not 32? But David Patrick Kelly here finally goes to bat for him. That guy saved baseball. Yes, he saved it. So every club owner and every ball player drawing down a salary ought to go up and kiss Ruth's big fat mug every time the bait pulls on a pair of spikes. All right. So the team was terrible this season. But don't blame Babe Ruth. Well, that is, unless he saves a dog. Then we can suspend the shit out of him. Poor Babe. Maybe he's gonna bump himself up to chocolate milk. Maybe they're right. I'm 32. Maybe I am too old. Well, yes, you're too old, but it's not because you're 32, it's because you're old enough to be Claire's dad. Which, okay, I believe there are a couple now, but I can't really tell because they're barely touching each other. In this scene where they're actually playing a game, the sequence was filmed moments before a real game at Yankee Stadium. Which I feel really sorry for the guy in the audience with dementia who probably thinks he's just wandered into a time machine. Not only that, but they'll get to see a side of the babe that they've never seen before. Too close, ball one, and the crowd is booing the pitcher, not the umpire for a change. They really want to see the Bambino bust one. Ooh, busted one out? Mm -hmm. I didn't know we were getting the Babe Ruth story after dark. I'm a little pissed off here because I could have made a fortune off of this game if there weren't that no betting sign. Looks like he finally hit enough home runs to impress his best girl. He even gave her the winning ball. Signed, This Ain't Babe Ruth, a triple X baseball. Gee, what a big pearl. <laughs> Those broads, they know nothing about the sports. And speaking of busting one out. My 60th homer. That's Babe 60th? Oh boy, would I like to have that ball. Wait till you see what he does with the winning bat. The big story is that the Yankees won the World Series, but I'm way more interested in this pirate slaughtering that must have happened off the coast. The movie is so exciting, the actors just seem to be waiting out the rest of the film. I've never seen someone so depressed to be so excited. Babe, I've never dared tell you this before, but you're the gosh darndest greatest ball player that ever ended this game. Just think about how good you'd be if you were the goddamnedest. Actually, the manager is quite sick, and you can tell he's sick because they just turned his lights out. So let's have this big ol' ogre come in and shout like it's New Year's Eve. Uh, guess what? Claire and me, we're married! We just got back from our honeymoon. Oh, yeah, we brought you some flowers, too. Uh, pretty? Huh? Uh, nurse? Now, who wouldn't be excited to have the babe as their hospital guest? Put these in some nice fresh water. But... Go on, go on, go on, go on, go on. Ha, ha. Uh, we... You know, maybe you could have told them that he was dead before he entered the room and started talking to him. I didn't know that the light being turned out was also his life. Hug. There's something I want to say. Why'd you take the needle? You were America's guest. Everyone loved you. This is a fantastic eulogy the babe gives. Too bad the movie never says how the manager died. But only now does it officially say that Babe and Claire are together. So some plot details you just kind of have to wait out. Everyone is so sad the field is flying their flag at 120th staff. Good news though, according to the newspaper, not only did the Yankees win, but Babe Ruth grew the size of a skyscraper and blew the players out of the park. He was later investigated for steroids. The next bit all takes place during Game 3 of the 1932 World Series, where Ruth famously made his called shot, but that story's not good enough, so let's spice the shit out of it. Yeah, this is George Herman Babe Ruth in person. What do you want to make out of it? But if you could autograph a baseball for my boy. You see, Johnny's had a serious operation. He's been injected with a lethal dose of cheese. You know what they say, you can't spell inspirational sports movie without dying children. The boy is a great fan of yours, and if you could send him an autographed ball, it might be the incentive the youngster needs to live. But if that doesn't work, medication. Babe goes to visit Johnny, the dying child, and maybe if there's an injured dog, he can also take it to the hospital. Kid's in pretty bad shape, huh, Doc? Medicine can do no more for him. Have you tried something stronger than triamenic? There you go, sit on him. That'll help. 
Now we get to this next part, which totally happened in real life, in the mind of a crazy person. Now listen, I'm gonna make a deal with you, Johnny. You listen to that World Series game in Chicago over the radio this afternoon. Will you do that for me? And I'll sock a home run into the center field bleachers for you. That's a sweet offer, but Johnny is so medicated that he thinks Babe Ruth is actually the Grimace offering him a free milkshake. Time now to make that winning shot to win the game and cure a child's illness. Ben! Don't forget Johnny! Believe me, I haven't forgotten Johnny! I'm three bottles deep into Johnny Walker right now as we speak! It's long since been disputed if Babe Ruth actually called his shot or not, with some people believing he called his home run to center field, others believing he pointed to taunting fans in the bleachers or taunting players in the Chicago Cubs dugout. But whether he did call the shot or not, Cub fans have blamed Steve Bartman for this loss ever since. They'll be talking about this as long as baseball lives. Babe Ruth, with only one chance left, actually called his shot as if determined to smash that ball into a certain spot. And no power on earth was going to stop it. Okay, sure, he made the home run, and the Yankees won 7-5, to but the real story should be that Babe Ruth cured cancer. After retiring from the Yankees, Ruth takes a management position with the Boston Braves, as well as modeling for a newspaper cartoonist. But the Boston Braves still want Babe to actually play on the field. Who are you kidding, Babe? You'll never be too old to play. Uh, you can't change your birth certificate. I'm 41. Ah, look at it like this, Babe. You don't look a day older than you did when you were 18. And it looks like his skills are just as good here as they were in the rest of the movie. Still, the Babe can hit enough home runs to where entire innings are completed within seconds. But the game proves to be too much for the old Babe. Want me, Babe? Run for me, kid. Play for me, too. Also, cure world hunger for me, kid, and feline AIDS, and take care of that whole Hitler problem. And how well can you fit into a Santa costume? Oddly enough, I think the only disease that Babe Ruth doesn't cure in this movie is Lou Gehrig's disease. But with a sea of home runs by his side, Babe makes his final bow as a player. I saw that guy when he broke in. I saw him when he bowed out. I also saw him knee-deep in Asian prostitutes, enough to build the second Great Wall of China. I saw him come and I saw him go. Yeah, that's what I just said. At least he still has his job as an assistant manager. Babe, you were fired. Any more blunt ways you could have possibly put that? The boys in the front office said when you quit as a player, you violated your contract. You're through, babe as a player, and everything else. Well, what we're saying is we have a chair and a noose waiting for you in the other room. Because without baseball, we don't see how anyone could possibly want to continue with life. Well, I know someone who wouldn't take news like that lying down. Don't fuck with me, fellas! But Babe doesn't quite go that route. Give it all you got and baseball will be good to you. That's what Babe said. Look what baseball's doing to him. That's all right, sir. No, it isn't. You ought to sue him. Sue Baseball? Uh, yeah, they are kind of fucking you. No, kid. That would be like suing the church. Without a job as an assistant manager or anything pertaining to baseball, Babe Ruth takes a wrestling job, where he famously introduces the concept of mud to this sexy sport, not to mention that he may just have invented Andy Kaufman. But when Babe starts complaining of neck pains, that signals the Babe's final bout with throat cancer. Maybe he can get that guy Babe Ruth to visit him in the hospital. I hear that that guy can even cure blindness. The fans, however, still let Babe Ruth know how much they care. They sent you a free jacket. I don't know what this mail is about. <laughs> yeah, just set that anywhere. It's not like he's dying or anything. Not even on a deathbed can people escape Christmas carolers. And since the real Babe Ruth wasn't quite dead at the time of filming, here's the ending that they went with. <laughs> you know, just in case. Well, there is one treatment. But it's not fair even to mention it. What is it? Tell me. It's a serum. Untried. It's, it's hardly more than a theory. It's the merest chance. Well, if there's a chance, try it. 
It'll cure your throat cancer, but it'll also make you a tad bit grumpy. Not do a cartwheel. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Stand on your ass. Still a more accurate biography than this film. For a guy dying of throat cancer, he looks to be in the best condition of his life. Seriously, he looks like he's running for president. Maybe it's because he's got the best doctors in the world working on him. You're the guy who saved that little dog's life in Chicago. I'm the guy, babe. Great, so now the babe will be rid of that cancer, and he'll also be housebroken, too. The movie ends with words of encouragement to all the young baseball players out there. As long as there is a ball, a bat, and a ball. And as long as there's a Wendy Peppercorn. Plus there's also this final wrap-up on the Babe's story, according to this film. This has got to be my 61st homer. The home run king who had drawn over 55 million people to ballparks all over the land that night repaid every single fan for every single cheer. And then he died three weeks later. No, seriously, Babe Ruth passed away three weeks after the release of this film. He lived just long enough to attend the premiere for the movie, and an obvious joke would be, Oh shit, did the movie kill him? But as cheesy and schmaltzy as this movie is, who the fuck wouldn't want a movie like this made about them? The movie does everything but declare him as a saint by the end of it. Hell, even if he did die in the movie, it probably would have shown him resurrecting three days later. I've seen documentaries about Mother Teresa that aren't as kind to their subject as this film. Hell, if the makers of this movie made a film about the Baseball Furies, it would have been about them passing out bread and soup to the poor. Babe Ruth probably lived an extra three weeks because this movie made him feel like a god. And that's what makes this not quite as bad of a film as Wired. At least this movie actually likes its subject, so much so that I think Babe Ruth and the screenplay are legally married. Everything from Newsday, to the AV Club, to the Boston Globe, to the Washington Times, to Movie Phone, have called this one of the worst biographies ever made, and one of the worst movies ever made. It is the exact personification of sports bio cliches, and gag-inducing, heavy-handed, idolizing cheese, that it's like a five-year-old writing a biography on his favorite superhero on the back of a cereal box with a stack of crayons. Now if you'll excuse me, I need to go work on my exclusive cinema snob biography where not only do I cure cancer, but also the rickets, whooping cough, black water fever, and the bronze john. Mr. Babe, what league was you playing in today?